Hey guys, uh, welcome to another session in YouTube on network buffers. And for this session, we are going to talk only about flow through buffers, in which case we do not store and forward the whole packet. We will pass the packet as soon as we have the few bytes of the packet in. So here we have our network Bob and network Bob is a network engineer and he is trying to solve this problem of not having packet loss and how soon can he transmit the packets and not have packet loss and how to prevent all the troubles that his boss wants him to avoid. So Network Bob has this flow through buffer design in which the buffer does not store the whole packet, starts transmitting as soon as it gets the packet and the incoming and outgoing rates are not matched. So um, he starts thinking about the problem and then he breaks down the problem into two parts. If the outgoing rate is faster than the incoming rate and packets are coming in, so let's just understand the terminology for a second. If P is the packet size, if B is the prefill of the buffer, which means that the amount of data you have to have in the buffer before you start transmitting that packet, if RO is the rate of the output and RI is the rate of the input data, which is normally the frequency or the clock rate at which data is coming in and the clock rate at which data is going out of the buffer, then what Network Bob's saying is that if the outgoing rate is faster, make sure you do not catch the buffer underflow. If this side is faster than this, you're going to catch up. And if the packet starts coming in, and if you catch up, then there is no data in the network buffer, and therefore the output will stall, and that may be a problem in some cases. So if you follow this formula that if you give yourself a head start, which means you don't start transmitting till you have a certain amount of data, and that data is the prefill. And let's call that B. So RO minus RI is the rate at which this this is trying to catch up. And so if this prefill over RO minus RI is always greater than the packet size minus the prefill, which is the amount of data still to come into the buffer at the rate RI. If so P minus B is still to come into the buffer at the rate RI. This is the time it takes and as long as the time it takes for us to chew through the prefill at the incremental rate of RO minus RI is greater than this rate, then we will never catch up and the packet will all come into this buffer and drain out without ever being in a situation where there is nothing to transmit and the data is still to come in. So that is the condition <laughs> Network Bob has figured out. And that's one side of the problem. The other side of the problem is if the outgoing rate is slower, then what do you do? If the outgoing rate is slower, which means that you are in the danger of filling up to the buffer. And how do you avoid that condition? So normally in that condition, what should happen is that there should be a back pressure mechanism, which means that if you try to fill up above a certain high water mark or threshold, that should stall the previous stage and saying, do not transmit more into this buffer or I'm going to fill up. So this design of the buffer or a flow through buffer in this case would apply back pressure to the previous stage. So that's it guys for this edition of network buffering and I will be back with more videos in this series to explain store and forward and other more complex scenarios with Network Bob and hope you enjoyed this show and if you did give me a thumbs up and please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I make those new videos. Thanks a lot again and see you soon.